nerves to sit up here and talk, and um, sometimes our nerves can get the best of us, so if you can just give her your attention, we'd appreciate it. Here you go, Kate. All right, I'm Kate, in case any of you didn't know. Um, Hi, Kate. Hello. Hi, Kate. What up, Kate? Hi, Kate. Um, Hi, Kate. <laughs> okay, hello. It's <laughs> wonderful to see you all tonight, but I just felt compelled to come up here and talk about something that's been really evident in my faith probably in the last year or so, and it's why God doesn't stop Satan from doing bad things. So I'm going to open up with a verse that just really stuck out to me. Um, does someone want to read it? I can read it. Yo, okay. I have a Bible, but... All right, it's 1 Peter 6 through 7. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7. It's underneath there. Well, I, Julian's got a bunch. Yeah. Oh, okay, look at you being all prepared. I know. <laughs> yeah. First Peter 1, 6 through 7. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine, and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Thank you, Jillian. So what this verse is trying to say is, like, going through trials and tough times is part of our faith. It is part of being a Christian. But you have to stick with God, because the moment Jesus Christ is revealed, He will, like, want you to have a relationship with Him. And through the tough times, his light will always manage to shine through. And it doesn't have to be like a very hard, very like evident struggle. Like I have a story that I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to jump back probably about to October or so. So I was chilling at home alone. My mom was at a meeting and my dad was at a movie. And they're like, we're going to be home at like 11. So I was like, all right, sweet. Like. I get a burrito and home alone time. So I was just chilling and my kitchen has two countertops and an island and my phone was like plugged into the island. It was like right here. And without thinking, when I went to put the burrito away, I blasted off and my phone fell off to the ground. And I was like, oh crap. Because it was completely off the ground. And my phone, like, this may seem stupid, but it is, like, genuinely my lifeline. Because obviously, like, if there was an emergency or something, I wouldn't be able to, like, um, run out of the house or anything like that. So that phone is my lifeline. And I get a lot of anxiety when it's gone. So I look at the floor. And the phone's just laying there on the floor with the cord and the cubes in the wall. So I was like, all right, Kate, you can't panic yet. You gotta push through it. So I looked everywhere. Like, I looked in the living room and in my parents' bedroom and, like, all around my game room and everything. And I could not find a single thing to, like, fish it up. And in my heart... I knew that it was basically impossible to get it off the ground, but I was going delusional. <laughs> like, I was going insane. I was like, why can't this phone get off the ground? So that was the moment where I really, like, started to panic. And I sit there, and I start bawling, and then I start cussing, and then I was like, it's only 6 o'clock. Like, what am I supposed to do? I have all this time. So I look at the phone and I just keep thinking about how it's on the ground. It's right there. And how if I was a completely normal human being, I could literally just bend over and pick it up. No big deal. So I start getting really, really mad at God. And I said, God, you parted the waters. Just give me my dang phone. Like, just give, like, fix the situation. Like, 
at the snap of your fingers, you could fix this. Why aren't you fixing it? And I even went as far as to go to the deck door and like open up my back door and scream, help. But it was at night and it was in October and who's gonna be outside in the cold. So I shut the door and I was like, okay, like what do you do when you're in like a not okay crisis that's not so like in the moment and evident you pray. So I took a deep breath and I rolled into my living room and I started praying and I was like, God, please just send someone. Send someone, whether it's a neighbor coming over to like borrow an egg or my grandma coming over to like drop something off. Just send somebody over, please. I need someone right now. And then I sat there and I thought to myself, what are you doing? Like you are being so stupid. Like it takes God months, maybe even years to um, answer prayers. He's not gonna a answer something immediately. So I stopped crying and I like took a deep breath and um, all of a sudden the weirdest thing happened. I started hearing footsteps, which is something I did when I was little, when I didn't, like when I had anxiety and didn't have a phone, like I would imagine footsteps because I was just so like desperate for someone to come home. So I was like, those can't be real. Like, what are you doing? Just chill out. It's not the end of the world. You're gonna survive. But I look outside the back window and it's my dad. And my dad opens the door and he goes, Kate, your phone's on the ground. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I know, but why the heck are you home? And he goes, I don't know. I walked into the theater and something told me I needed to come home. And I was like, what? Like my heart just dropped. Never before has it been so clear that God is always with me. Like, it was just such an astounding moment. It was so surreal. And I looked up and I waited till he was in the bedroom and I go, thanks. And like, it just shows that God is always with you. So God allowed Satan to take away my phone, per se, or like let it fall on the ground. Like Satan was like, yo, I'm gonna put her in misery. And God was like, you know what? This is an opportunity. Like I can show her that she can trust me in any time whatsoever. And ever since then, I haven't really got anxiety when being left home alone, which reminds me of the book of Job. And if you guys don't know about the book of Job, Job was this dude, he was pretty, Decent and God was just <laughs> God, God was just up, like in his realm, like chilling with all his dudes. And he's like, I have this wonderful servant named Job. He loves me, he's a pretty great dude. And Satan to the back and he goes, Whoa, 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 I have an objection. And he goes up to God and he's like, I guarantee you, if you take everything a way that he loves, if you take away his family and his buildings and his animals and everything, he will spit in your face and God is like, nah, -uh. like this joke dude, like he's for real, like he will always be there and he will always love me and the devil's like, you want to make a bet? And God is like, all right, sure, do whatever, just don't hurt him. So slowly God, or Job just loses everything. And God lets all that happen. And Job is like, what the heck? Like, what did I do? So through all this, he doesn't sin and he sticks with God and he's next to God. Um, and then later you f find out that he's really upset. And he's like, God, curse the day that I was born. Like, why'd you do this? And his friends come to like help him. They're like, bro, God is just. 
you must have done something absolutely terrible. Like, what the heck did you do while we were away? Like, like everything is gone. What did you do? And he goes, nothing. So after hours and hours of speculation, of them like arguing back like the real housewives like it, it was insane they're like you did something and joe was like no uh he was like all right i've had enough show yourself so god comes down he's like yo i'm a storm cloud and he comes to the in the form of a storm cloud and he basically shows job everything that he created he takes them he takes them on the, this like vr tour of the world and is like look at everything i created i am god why would i ever do this to you and then he goes away so job's like chilling like i didn't get an answer like i asked you to show yourself and he's like i did so one by one Job slowly gets everything back. And God never really explained why all that happened. But as he gets his stuff back, people come and start visiting him. And he always tells that story because from then on, he was able to live in the security of God. So God let Satan take away all of his stuff. But even through all of that, God's light was able to shine through. And I think that sometimes what we forget is sticking with God is like the most important thing. And we're so tempted to like turn away from God. Like even Jesus was tempted. And like the devil came up to him while he was in the desert and he was like, yo, you're the son of God. Like turn these stones into bread. And Jesus is like, nah. Like, I don't need to prove to you anything. I just gotta stick with my papa. Like, we gotta stay true with God's word. So, like, even Jesus, like, the most powerful being in the world was tempted by the devil. And I think it's really easy to get in a difficult situation and want to turn away from God. And that brings me to the other story. I pretty sure that most of you are familiar with the elevator that brings me up here. And at the beginning of my freshman year, that was a time when I started coming to youth group in the first place. And I think at the beginning of freshman year, it's pretty normal for everyone to feel kind of lost. Like I didn't really know who my friends were except for a few. So the only place where I really felt firm and welcome was youth group. So the elevator stopped working. And I'm like, this is wonderful. Like, I can't go to youth group anymore. So I, like, Eve texts me one night and she's like, yay, the elevator is working. So I come and I'm like, uh, like all my prayers work. I, like, I finally get to go to youth group and like experience fellowship and worship Jesus and I get there and Eve is like guess what the elevator just stopped working and I was like God really I'm trying to work like I'm trying to worship you why would you ever take that away why are you doing this I <coughs> never have been so confused as to why God wouldn't let me do something. It's like, it's youth group. I'm not like doing drugs. <laughs> like, why are you letting me do this? Like, I want to go to youth group. And um, I call my mom and it goes straight to voicemail and I'm like, oh crap, like she's, she's at a meeting right now. Like, what am I supposed to do? And she won't be here till like 8.45. So then my buddies, Rachel and Brogan walk in and they're like, yo, yo, like, are you ready for some Jesus? And I'm like, 
Well, yeah, I'm always ready for Jesus. But there's one problem. I have to leave. The elevator doesn't work. So they're like, diggity darn it. Like, I wanted you to come to you for so bad. I was like, I know, me too. Like, I want some Jesus. And I was like, well, Rachel was like, is your mom coming to pick you up? And I was like, well, there's one thing. Like, she's at a meeting. And, like, I was all sad and talking to Brogan. And I was like, I wish I could, like, walk up the stairs or whatever. And meanwhile, Rachel is in the back. Like, wait a solid minute. Like, I have a plan. So she runs to Eve. And she goes, Eve, is the bill open tonight? And Eve goes, well, that's exactly what I was just thinking. Like, maybe we could use the bill. So we talked to Father Kay, and Father Kay's like, heck yeah, you can use the bill. So, like, like Rachel and Brogan are like freaking out. They're like, yay, you get to do youth group. And I'm sitting here thinking, Kay, you're such a burden. Like, they wouldn't have to do this if you didn't want to take part in it. And I'm just sitting here like, are they genuine? Like, did they genuinely want me to be a part of this? So I wait for them to bring everything downstairs. And I just have this very vivid memory of all you guys just coming down the stairs with the most overexcited, wonderful, looks on your faces like, yay, Kate gets to be part of youth group. And I, I'm i gonna be honest, I was almost driven to the point of tears. I have never, ever felt so welcome somewhere in my life. So it was just such a profound emotion of, yeah, Kate, we want you to be here. So they set up the screen, because we were gonna watch a video. They moved all the food downstairs, most of the drinks, and I was like, you guys are doing this all for me? And they were like, yeah, you get to be a part of youth group. So we did our fun little games. We watched our legit video. And then, and then after youth group, I was once again chilling with um, my friends, Rachel and Brogan. And we were at Sonic, and we were the last ones there. And I was like, they are the ones that like instigated this. I need to tell them how I felt. So I go, can I tell you guys something personal? And they were like, yeah, go ahead. You can tell us anything. And I said, well, honestly, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this wonderful group of kids that welcomes me. And the fact that you guys did that all for me tonight, like that's amazing. And Brogan was just eating his slushy and he looks up at me and he goes, well, you know, Kate, we love you. And we wouldn't want you to ever miss out on anything. And that's when I knew. I was like, Satan stopped the elevator. But God intervened. And he was like, yo, like I'm gonna show her what a wonderful support system she has even outside of school. Like, yeah, they may not be at school, but she has friends through that she's made through me like and I that was just so cool to see what God had done for me it was almost like he was like rolling out a red carpet and like showing me what a wonderful support system I had so like yeah so God like always manages to shine through and like it doesn't always happen so spur of the moment and immediately like some of my stories like another example like I'm handicapped in case you didn't already know um, <laughs> um, and being handicapped is really really hard and there are days where I want to turn away from God and go God why'd you let this happen but when I was in my mama's room, or womb, partying it up, like, <laughs> I'm feeling, Satan said, yo God, 
if I take this woman's complete physical ability away, she will live a miserable life and she will turn away from you. And God said, no, you know what? Someday she's going to find me and someday she's going to sit in front of a group of kids and talk about her struggles and talk about how she found me through what you do to her. So that's what I did. <coughs> <coughs>